I'm going to try to walk through this very slowly um, to help you understand and to help myself understand. So these are 10 foot sections of PVC. None of these are connected with any type of PVC glue or anything at this time. It's all just sitting there for us to look at. The PVC I purchased, I made sure that all of them had this thick wall. So there was a bunch of three quarter inch PVC that was sitting together. Some of them were much thinner. I'll put a picture. I took a picture when I was at Lowe's. I'll insert that here. Okay, hopefully that worked and you guys were able to see uh, what they had at Lowe's. They had them both sitting in the same bay. Just make sure you get the ones with the thicker walls. Um, and I say that not from experience. I just say that looking at it, it looks way more flimsy. And I don't think that that's going to hold up the strong winds that has a better chance of collapsing. But this has got, you know, a good eighth to a quarter of an inch thickness, closer to an eighth. Um, and that just gives it a little more resiliency. So these are all... 10 foot sections of three quarter inch PVC. On the ends, we have your end to end for your hoop, which goes up like this. Let's see if we can make it hoop up to, so you guys see what I'm working with. All right, see I have a T piece in the middle because this is gonna be an end. It doesn't need to be a cross. It's a T piece because nothing's gonna be coming off the front. It's gonna hoop it up. This is how that's going to look. All right, and see that T piece taken off towards the other PVC? I'll set that back down. So this will be cut in half. This 10 foot section here will be cut in half at five feet and connected with a T piece right at the five foot mark. So we'll have five foot T, five foot T, five foot and a T. And they all need to be facing the same direction when you glue them, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna have PVC shooting everywhere instead of in the model of a greenhouse. And it's gonna go towards your middle sections. All your middle sections are gonna have cross pieces. So you'll have five foot cross, that's a cross, five foot cross, five foot cross. And that'll connect this one with a three foot, four inch piece to here, to here. And whenever you finally close it up, you'll want to have T's on the other end because it's not, nothing else is going that way. That's the end of it. So you'll have a five foot T, five foot T, five foot T, five foot. Um, before I do any gluing though, I saw this video on YouTube they didn't go into the finite details, and I'm gonna try to do that for you guys. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I saw they did theirs at 12 feet, but I'm six foot one, so I don't know if that's gonna work for me. So I'm going to take two pieces of half inch rebar that I've got in the back of the truck here. half inch by 18. I'm going to place those 12 feet apart. I'm just gonna pound it into the ground over there and I'll leave this T intersection in here. And I'm just gonna set the hoop up in the front yard and I'm gonna see if that height works for someone like me that's six foot one. We've got our rebar laid out 12 feet apart. So we can take a measuring tape back. All right. And one thing I'll add is this was just for testing and this piece of rebar isn't completely straight. Uh, whenever we go over there and we do it on the actual greenhouse, you want that to be as straight up and down as possible. We don't want to put a bunch of extra stress on the PVC that we don't have to. But we're slipping this right over the top of that piece of PVC. 
that's holding it up nicely. Make sure that it's tilted in. Doesn't really matter for this demonstration, but I want you guys to get the idea that that T-section's gotta be facing towards the inside. All right, and then this one in. Now this just came apart on me. So with my phone in my hand, I'm going to attempt to rejoin these. Okay. Now, I'm 6'1". Turn the camera around here if I can. I'm 6'1", and I've got plenty of headspace. Um, and I can walk right over to the edge here. I got plenty of room to access the side. So 12 feet apart is plenty of room and plenty of headspace. So we'll take that down. Um, and now we're gonna get started on cutting PVC at five foot sections and three foot, four inch sections. Starting with your end, every, because these are 10 foot sections and we're cutting them into thirds, long ways, um, starting with the end, every three poles from the end, so every one, two, three, so at the end of that fourth pole, that distance will total up 10 feet. Three foot, four inches, three foot, four inches, three foot, four inches, 10 feet. So what I'm going to do is count over to see how many pieces I'm going to need. And of course it'll be doubled because there'll be two each way. So this is three foot four, three foot four, 10 feet, three foot four, three foot four, 20 feet, three foot four, three foot four. That's gonna be the end of my greenhouse right there. So it's, I said 27 feet, it's gonna be 26 feet, eight inches, plus maybe a small little gap from the connector pieces. Um, might give me an extra couple inches. Um, <laughs> But that's how many it's going to take. So I'll need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, just to go this way, the hoops. And then I'll need, so 3 foot 4, 3 foot 4, and then 6 feet. So I'll need 2 and 3 quarter pieces going this way, 2 and 3 quarter pieces going that way. Um... So I bought 28 pieces. Looks like I'm gonna have more than enough. I was planning on making it bigger, um, but you know what, maybe that's a little too ambitious and it's better to start small. We don't have to cut the plastic so we can add on later and you'll see what I'm talking about later on in the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start measuring these off and cutting these. Uh, so 18 of those need to be cut at fives and then we'll take five pieces, uh, six pieces and cut them at three foot four inches. Okay, because I've got to chop so much uh, PVC, I'm gonna do it on the miter, but I've got a block down there that I'm gonna drill down. I'm just gonna drill it in with this screw to hold it in place, but that's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then right at the blade, we got five feet. So that's gonna cut it right in half. I measure the PVC, it's exactly 10 feet long, but then I can just run them through here set them down, chop it in half, and the next one will knock all 18 of them out really fast. Just wanted you guys to see, I got all those laid up down there and these are all even, but one of these is short. So don't trust that every piece of PVC you buy is perfect. Um, maybe having to get this one replaced. Did seven at once on the miter saw, so that's a pretty good way to do it. Okay, so we've got all of our five foot pieces cut, all of our three foot, four inches pieces cut. Um, so what I'm gonna do now 
is I've got four of the five foot pieces. One's on the ground there. We've got our PVC, we got our T's. Um, and right now, I just blew this off with the leaf blower. We've already got leaves coming back. It's a little bit windy today. Maybe not the best day to be building the greenhouse, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is my day off. <clears throat> Two, three, four. We'll just start right here. We want to make sure when we glue these that each of these goes on facing the same way. So when this is glued and it's solid, it's facing this way. And the next one will be just like that. And then the next one. So if you're not familiar with PVC, you have a primer or a cleaner. Think about it as a cleaner. It just gets this ready to receive the rubber cement. Um, set you down for a second here. Take the lid off of this primer. Or maybe I won't. I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers to take that off. All right, so we got the primer, which I thought I had off. There we go. Our purple primer. I'm just gonna take and rub that along the edge here, along the bottom. Get this other side. It's a good idea to wear rubber gloves when you're working with this. It does stain your fingers. I'll switch to rubber gloves after I do this one. And then we got our rubber cement. That purple primer dries really fast. Okay, and I also like to Put some rubber cement on the inside of the fitting that I'm going to be working with. And now we're going to join these two together. All right, and that's the first one. It's the first one, and it's laying this way. So we're going to continue to do that for the next couple. Make sure that they're all facing this direction, all straight, T's facing inward. I'm going to go put some rubber gloves on and attach these guys. I'm going to go ahead and say it before someone criticizes in the comments. Um, you do want to prime this too. I mean, you can, you don't really have to, but um, I prime one, for example, if you want to be super tedious, you can prime the inside of your fittings, all three sides. Um, but this is just an example. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep on doing just primer in the ends and then putting the rubber cement in. All right, I've got the first end section done. You can see 20 feet. Five foot, five foot, five foot, five foot. Three T's. One, two, three. All facing the same direction. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and do my, my five feet over here and put four with the cross intersections. And then after I have that and I have that line straight up, then I'll go ahead and connect it to these. And then we're going to take a break. We're going to set our frames, the wood that's in the back of the truck. We're going to set our frames over uh, where the greenhouse is going to be. Um, and that should go pretty fast because I've already mowed it flat and the garden used to be there So it's been tilled and it's nice and flat. We don't have to worry about grading it um, but we're gonna Do this first section Let it dry and set up and then we'll go prep the greenhouse Just realizing this whole process would be a lot faster with the helper So I'm gonna go see if the wife wants to help
So I've got a guest house right here, and this is where we had some pumpkins growing. You'll see, you'll see there's still some pumpkins back there. Uh, it's October 12th, Columbus Day, 2020. I've got this mowed out, um, so 12 feet left to right, 27 feet-ish up and down. This is the north side, so we'll have, be getting maximum amount of sunlight on the uh, largest part of our greenhouse. You know, the sun will do its thing. Um, doves. Anyway, uh, so we're going to take the two by fours and start getting it ready. Make sure that it's 12 feet wide, um, 27 feet long, and we'll, um, actually going to do 26 feet, eight inches. And then if I have to cut an, a couple other pieces of PVC, I'm all right with doing that. Uh, because it's going to be off by a couple inches, I'm sure. But 12 feet, 26, 8. And we are going to measure it. I got water coming out of here um, and electricity. So that'll be good if I need to use electric for anything out here in the greenhouse. I might have to use electric heat for a little bit till I get a wood stove out here. Um, and... Again, water is right there. I can put a spigot onto this building and I'll be able to have water right here in the greenhouse or, you know, even later on turn it into a high tunnel. And I need to have water there anyway, just to water this garden. It's October, but, uh, and we go to the farmer's market. Lately, we've been the only ones with tomatoes at the farmer's market. These plants are all falling over, but we got still plenty of big, beautiful tomatoes still growing the weight of the tomatoes are bearing the plants down i got tomatoes under my feet i have to hang that up um but yeah it's need a greenhouse so we can do our own plants over this winter and play with some different types of seeds and have a variety for our customers at the farmer's market next season so here we go we're going to get the wood and we'll get started Okay, so I just got the wood laid out there. Now these are 10 foot boards and I understand that's not going to be the length I'm trying to make it because that's 30 feet. I'm gonna be 26, 27 feet. So I'm gonna wait to do this end and I'm gonna see where my pegs end. I'm gonna measure it all out. I got all the rebar and I'm gonna measure where the rebar is gonna be. We'll put the rebar in place first measure corner to corner side to side up and down and uh, make sure that it's perfect plumb straight and once we do that then I'll bring the boards on and I'll nail those on around um, you see I got some little ones around here these are for staking it into the ground we're gonna hammer those in and then screw them to the boards but I want the rebar in place first to make sure that we don't put those in a place where we need to be having PFC because I want it all to be nice and straight uh, that's an eight foot board. So I had to cut one at four feet. These little boards are just to marry those two together. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go ahead and marry the two eight foot and four foot. So I've got perfect 12 on the ends. Um, and then after that, I will use those as a guide for my distance, um, for my width. And then we'll start measuring and pounding in rebar. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start measuring from. I've got this laid out south to north. The sun comes up in the east. There it is right there. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. It goes around and then settles back over there in them trees. So in the summertime, you know, 10 o'clock would be about here. You get a little higher in the sky and it sets over there. But we'll have maximum sunlight on the greenhouse anyway I'm gonna stake one here and then stake one down at the other end so right at the end of the 12 I want the rebar to line up with the edge of this board 
right there. I'm going to pound that there. Do the same thing on the other side. And that is going to be my point of origin for the rest of the measurements. All right, piece of rebar there, piece of rebar there. Uh, on the outside, I put the this board that's holding these two together on the inside, um, on the edges, on end to end. But on the outside edges long ways, I put it on the outside because that's right at the 10 foot mark. And we're gonna have a piece of rebar there. And this would be in the way if it was on here, it would make it less than 12 feet. And we don't want that. So make sure you put those little stringers on the outside. Um, I took my 12 foot board and ran it across as I was going down, um, was measuring corner to corner to make sure it's plumb and this is pretty true right here where the board stands at 27 feet but what i'm going to do is measure three foot four and a quarter and mark it down all the way and go ahead and set my rebar then we'll go finish up the pvc and come back here come back here and start putting it all together Okay, so we've got that one glued together and our first mid middle section with the crosses on them is all glued. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and PVC these together and you'll see that all these crosses are facing the same direction. You know, you don't want one sticking up or being wonky because you want it all to be nice and straight and you don't wanna put extra stress on the PVC. So. I'm going to glue it together and then after that I'm going to measure center to center to see what that distance is. It should be around, you know, three foot four inches, but that's how I'm going to set up my distance over there where the greenhouse is, um, where I'm going to mark for the rebar. So I'm going to take what the distance ends up being and I'm going to use that distance because it might be off a little bit having these uh, little intersections on there the fitting so let's glue it together get it measured and see what it's going to be all right so after measuring center to center it's even further than i thought so now it's at three foot five and a half inches at the center mark so that's what we're going to do with the rebar over there wind blew the camera over and I'm not going to redo that again by myself but it is definitely possible to do it by yourself I mean I did it so so can you push this other side down the rest of the way I might have to kick the tow board out to be able to fit it down but now you can kind of see where this is going so after we get those in I bought some fittings. Uh, I must have put them in the garage. So I'm gonna go get those little clamps. They just go around to hold the PVC in place. Since we've already got two done, I'm gonna go grab those. And then we'll also, now that we've got these in place, we'll put a couple of these two by four stakes down and screw them into the sides of the frame. All right, I've got all of the 20 foot long pieces all glued up. This is the other end. You can see that it has the T's on it. Started a little after eight this morning. It's 1117. It's going up. It's gonna go up real fast now. So we'll get the rest measured out. Uh, the other three foot, five and a half inches. Um, to get all these put in place, and what I'm gonna do before I walk them over is I'm gonna glue two sections together. So let's see, I've got two, that'll be one piece, two, two. And then this end piece, I will just glue in 
the three short pieces and walk it over there by itself and then glue it up whenever I get over there. So stay tuned. I'm going to go get some rebar set and then glue these up and walk them over. All right, so now I've marked off every 41 and a half inches and I placed my rebar all the way around. So now it's just a matter of getting it, the rest of it glued up and then set on. And then these are the fasteners I was telling you about. I'll take one of these fasteners here and we'll put it over the pipe, screw it down. That, with having these pounded into the ground, hopefully the that and the rebar, you know, the greenhouse won't go anywhere. process would definitely be a whole lot easier with a second person. Alright, so now it's all on the rebar, it's all connected, I got nice height under here, you guys can see me or not, but I got, I got plenty of room under here. Coming together nicely, so we'll get the uh, little clamps locked onto the edges and get it pound down drill down this open end here I've got three pieces left um, but I think I'm just gonna keep those as spares in case one of these others damage somehow but uh, that's pretty much it without the plastic but like I said I'm gonna punch those into the ground put the clamps on and I'm going to screw little screws with a tap and then screw Every single part that was glued, every one's gonna get a little screw in it. Additionally, I mean, it's gonna have the wind knocking it around a lot, so I don't want that thing to come undone. That's gonna mess everything up. So a little screw in each one just to make it that much stronger. And then uh, this afternoon, when the wind dies down, uh, the wife and I will come out here and we'll put some plastic on it. But I'm go ahead and get these clamps on. So for this, I'm just using one inch plywood screws. Just through these clamps. This is 
what they are, galvanized tube strap, three quarter inch, pack of 10, it was like three bucks. But, just take it like this, slide it over and screw it in. And we're gonna do that to the rest of the pipes. We got two down. A lot to go. 16. It's all fastened. Rolling out the plastic right now. It's a six mil. From Lowe's is about a hundred bucks. And try to cover it. I'm giving myself 12 feet extra on either side. And I'm just going to cut this and then we're going to try to cover it. All right, it's a few months later now. It's, uh, I started the video in October. It's January 3rd. I got kind of busy with work. And uh, anyway, now here we are. So this is the inside of the greenhouse. That is a curtain that's hung up halfway through the greenhouse. On the back side, there's electric heaters. There's some kale growing in here. Um, I'll just give you a peek back there. Some big tomatoes. There's a wood furnace in there, but it's not wood furnace. A little wood heater, uh, wood burning stove. It's not hooked up yet, but it will be. I changed the 2x4s out to 2x6s and put all of my fasteners on the inside, not the outside, because then it's in the way of the plastic. I should have realized that to begin with, but it's held up. It's gone through several storms. Um, I'm very, very impressed with this thing. It's worked for what we've been using it for. I'll make the, the wood stove a separate video. This is my door. Right by where you buy the plastic at Lowe's, they sell these zippers, these cloth zippers. Um, they have sticky stuff on the backside where they'll stick the plastic. But when it gets cold, they don't want to stick anymore. So there is tons of staples, like every inch to two inches, holding this on. And then you have to shave back, scissor back that extra plastic so that these zippers don't get caught in the plastic. And there's one on either side. And just a little frame to keep it stood up. One going off either side there, and then these poles coming down uh, in the ground. Um, I do think it was worth the purchase. I'm in it about five, six hundred bucks. That's including the cost of the two by sixes, and this thing's working out great for us so far. Um, more videos to come with what we're gonna do out here. I got some other videos that are started and not finished of starting seeds and growing those in our grow lights from a homemade shelf that I made. We'll get those uploaded, but hopefully this inspires you. Hopefully this gets you uh, motivated to maybe do your own DIY greenhouse or maybe to tackle a actual greenhouse by yourself. I was able to do it pretty much by myself for the most part. My wife did help me with the plastic. Uh, we did it the first time when it was a little windy. I'm never going to do that again. If it's more than a seven to eight mile per hour wind, just wait till a day that it's less windy. Um, because it's just, once it gets over 10, 12 miles per hour and up into the twenties, which is, it was like 15 the day we put it out here. No fun. No fun. This greenhouse is at the top of a hill with nothing blocking the wind and it catches a lot of wind and it's, it stood the test, but for <laughs> this to be pulled nice and tight, you're going to want to do it when there's pretty much no wind. Um, but that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.